So there was this very nice talk by Tavis Rudd at Strange Loop where he automated Emacs using uh, Dragon Speech and some Python script. But I'm a Vim guy, so I wanted to try to do the same kind of thing for Vim. Uh, so here I have, it's a console app, and normally you just run it in the background, it listens for your speech, and it does send key to the foreground app. And so the foreground app can be any app that expects Vim keystrokes. It could be uh, Visual Studio with Jared Parsons' awesome VS Vim plugin, which I use every day. Or it could be Sublime Text in vintage mode, which I use quite often. Or of course it could be Vim itself. So first let's just, let's just uh, see what this thing can do. Select three words. Visual mode. So you can see it gives you voice feedback as to what mode you're in. And there's a few other instances of voice feedback. It shows you the keys that it's sending and what it thinks you said and the confidence level. Escape. Normal mode. But So I'm just going to leave this in the background and switch to Vim. And this is the actual code for the thing itself. Two up. Select two down. Visual mode. So you can see I'm using system speech synthesis and system speech recognition from .NET 4.5. It works really well. Escape. Normal mode. Two down. Select down paragraph. Visual mode. So this is a discriminated union that I'm using to represent the grammar. Uh, you know, they have their own API set for building grammars. It's kind of an imperative thing, but in F Sharp here, I like to just stick to declarative. And this way I was able to add some extra metadata and things. So this is words with the English equivalent, what you should say, and the key binding, and then some semantic uh, values that get attached to that for mode switching. Um, and so then you have, you know, optional instances of those, and you have sequences of those where you have to say certain things in a certain order, or choices where you have a list of options to choose from. Um, and then there's a dictation mode. Escape. Normal mode. Down. Down. Scroll top. And so this is a function that takes one of those declarative grammars and builds an actual speech grammar out of it. Um, actually, what is this demo stuff doing in here? I right, was typing that right before I started recording. Let's, let's do some, uh, some Vim show off and get rid of that. 31 line. Delete line. Repeat. Repeat. Five repeat. Find comma. Again, delete till parentheses. Delete till parenthesis. Say again. Delete till right parent. Escape. Okay, so anyway, um, what we do with this though then is just build up simple grammars. They look really declarative and, uh, and then feed them through this to get a speech grammar out of it. Uh, the reason that I need a speech grammar is that dictation by itself is not all that great. Let's try it. Open. Insert mode. This is a test. That wasn't too bad. Okay, you're showing that uh, you work pretty well, actually. Enter. Let's try typing some, you know, programming related stuff. Grammar builder. Grammar Builder. Yeah, that's not too bad. Undo. Anyway, uh, you know, normally dictation isn't all that accurate, and so I have a speech grammar that restricts you to saying things that make sense as combinations of Vim keys. You know, so there's there's just English word equivalents for each of the Vim keys, and the grammar is really in the same order that the Vim keys would be. People talk a lot about how Vim is kind of a grammar for talking to your text editor, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, so this is just a mapping of English to that. Um, but having a normal mode in which it uses this structured grammar versus an insert mode in which it takes just dictation keeps the, uh, you know, the structured stuff is very accurate and the dictation is not quite as accurate. 35 line. Oops. Undo. Undo. Escape. Normal mode. 35 line. Okay, now normally you don't forget what mode you're in because it's just a habit to always hit escape, but uh, with speech is not so much. Page down. Page down. So there's, of course, you know, grammars for talking about numbers, which we showed. 75 line. Scroll top. 
So there's a grammar for just talking about upper and lowercase letters. Page Say down. Say again. Page down. 130 line. Scroll top. There's a grammar for talking about symbols on the keyboard. It's, you need to have uh, good words for that. You know, for example, I, I call uh, exclamation points bangs. Um, you know, I call uh, asterisks. I usually just call it a star. But in both those cases, I support both things. Two down. Two down. Select two down. Visual mode. So you can say either of those words to get a exclamation point. You notice I have dashes in my words because I wanted to just have a single recognized word unit representing a single key on the keyboard. So a lot of times I put dashes. Say again. Escape. Escape. Normal mode. Page down. Page down. Page down. Uh, so you have registers. You can talk about registers. You could use either just the symbol names or the kind of common names like you know black hole for the underscore. Page down. So now you have the uh, motions, and these are you know the ways you uh, get around in the in the editor. You can say things like uh, word, word, back, back, nine down. Three words, things like that. Um, you can navigate by finding characters. That's very common. Find comma. Again. Find parentheses. Say again. Find right parentheses. Find right paren. Start of line. Column zero. Um, let's see, what other things can you do? Search big. So you can do searches. And that was actually a combination of structured grammar with dictation. You say search, and then what follows is dictation. You can say anything you like. Say again. Um, you can search under the cursor. It's another way of doing things. So I could just say, search under cursor. Search under cursor. And it's just the single star command. Escape. Now, a common thing in Vim is to do a search and then, you know, use repeat and whatnot to, to do search and replace. Change word. Insert mode. Small. Escape. Normal mode. Next. Next. Repeat. Next. Repeat. So that's, that's a common thing to do. The repeat key is awesome. You can re repeat any uh, change that you've done. Undo. 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 Page down. Uh, what have we forgotten here? Oh, you can uh, jump to marks. So let's say, uh, actually we're going to get to that in a second. Page down. Page down. 272 line. Mark J. Mark J. So there's an example of having, you know, voice feedback is a good idea, otherwise you wouldn't know that anything happened here. But now we've marked this line, and uh, you can go somewhere else, like start of document, jump to mark J, scroll top. So you can get back really easily. 288 line, scroll top. So now these are some of the commands, uh, and the, now we're starting to get into the real grammar of Vim, where you can take commands, combine them with motions. You, know, you can go into visual mode and then move around to select things and apply commands to that, or you can just apply commands to a motion directly, which is extremely useful. Like, uh, delete Say word. Again. Delete word. Undo. Delete line. Undo. Three down. Three word. Delete inner quotes. Undo. Things like that. It's very useful. Uh, text objects. Those are those are pretty powerful. Three hundred two line. Scroll top. So you can do things like uh, five down. Three word. 
Select inner quotes. Visual mode. So you can select the inside of the quotes. Say again. Around quotes. Inner parentheses. Around parentheses. Inner square brackets. Around square brackets. Around square brackets. Escape. Normal mode. So text objects are awesome to be able to talk about whole things. Uh, kind of in both directions from the cursor. Say again. 330 line. Scroll top. Now surround vim isn't part of vim by default, but uh, this is Tim Pope's just absolutely awesome plugin for dealing with the surroundings of things. So it's basically the surroundings of text objects. So for example, eight down. Eight down. Three words. Change surrounding quotes to angle brackets. Isn't that nice? Change surrounding angle brackets to square brackets. Change surrounding angle brackets to square brackets. Delete surrounding square brackets. Surround word with quotes. Oh, see, there's an example where uh, the word text object isn't the full word. Undo. Surround big word with square brackets. Undo. Surround big word with quotes. There we go. It included the comma, Say again. Though. Say again. Find comma. Find comma. Swap characters. Anyway, text objects are great. Uh, I mean, surround surround them using text objects is awesome. Uh, you can do some kind of crazy things like uh, delete surrounding parentheses. Surround line with bold tags. Okay, so if you're into you know XML or or HTML editing in Vim, this is an absolutely astoundingly beautiful plugin. Word. Delete surrounding tags. Word. Surround big word with parentheses. Surround big word with parentheses. Find right parent. Erase. After line. Insert mode. Right parenthesis. Backspace. Escape. Normal mode. Anyway, uh, what else have I not demoed? Let's see, uh, visual block mode I think is the thing. Uh, start of line. Visual block. Visual mode. End. End. Undo. Let's try it again. Visual block. Visual block. Escape. Normal mode. Visual block. Visual mode. Nine down. Nine down. End. Change. Insert mode. Testing. Escape. Normal mode. So you can do blocks of, you know, vertical selections. Undo. Anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, maybe I'll do a, another demo at some point of you know, Vim features in general, or just more in depth of how the the speech echo stuff works, or Say again. You know, I don't know, maybe some F sharp stuff if people want to hear that.